This message is entitled, Your Placement Provides Your Purpose. 13 years ago on June 6th in 2005, I was awakened with three phrases running through my mind. The first was, desire determines your direction and destiny. That's out of a dead sleep because it was running through. The Holy Spirit quite often speaks to me in dreams. The messages that I deliver is uh, snippets of what the Lord pours out in the night to me, and it's an awesome thing. I wish that you could hear what I dream. And the second thought immediately followed was, your placement provides your purpose, which we are going to speak on today, and it's tagged with, as you function, you will find fulfillment. Your desire sets a trajectory for your destiny. Acting on your desires, the desires of your heart, moves us in a direction. And if you don't like the destination that trajectory is taking you on, repent and allow God to change your heart. Because out of the heart is where these desires come from. Matthew 15 verse 18 says, What comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And this is what defiles. So if there is things that you go, I don't know why am I drawn somewhere. Last week we talked about the fact that it is because our desires have been contaminated by what our actions have done. But Proverbs 4, 23 through 27 says, So we should watch over our heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. And it goes on to list many of these things. We can change through repentance the direction and trajectory our life is going toward. All repentance is, we, we demonstrate this all the time, is you're walking one direction and you turn and you repent and go the other direction. And your salvation started when you have repented. In less than two weeks, my family and I are going up to Big Manistee Lake for some R&R. &R. <laughs> and I like to take long enough vacations that make me remember why I work. I don't even envy the retired, and it doesn't surprise me that those who don't retire often live longer than those who do retire. It's because the will to live is closely tied to one's sense of purpose. When older people sense, I have no purpose in living, they usually wind down pretty quickly. So I challenge you, you want to live long, have a purpose, pursue it passionately. After a few weeks of vacation, I become very aware that though I love the cottage and looking out over this big, beautiful lake and see the gulls match the wind in playful sport and see my wife and kids playing around like, like we have no life, no responsibilities other than to feed our bellies. Though I love to be out on a lake, it's a beautiful place out there drowning worms or pulling in big fish, but that is not my place. My life purpose isn't found out there. I need to, I want to get back to the place where I have been planted because where I've been planted provides clarity for my purpose. Where I am makes clear what my purpose in life is. Many people struggle, what's my purpose in life? Where do I fit in? You know, I, when in younger years, I, I struggled with that. How many admit that times in their life they've wondered, what's my purpose? Uh, this, is, this is a message that is appropriate for everyone. But the task of finding your purpose in life 
is, can be made much easier if you relax and approach life as a child does. Kids don't stress over much of anything. That's an adult occupation. They're under this impression that their parents are caring for them, providing for them, and giving them the direction that they need if they really need it. They trust that if they need to know something, their parents are going to make them aware of it very obviously. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Susie. Come in. It's time for supper. And it doesn't matter. They're just out having a wonderful time playing out in the yard. And they know that if they need to get in for supper because they need to eat, their parents are going to make sure it's very clear to them. Or, you know, we got to go now. Get in the car now. If you don't get in the car, you're not coming with us. But clear direction from heaven happens for us, too, if we are listening. Matthew 6, 31 through 34 says, this is a challenge to us. These are adults. It says, don't worry then, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear for clothes? For the Gentiles, speaking, those who do, did not, you're speaking to the Jewish country, and those who did not have the awareness of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God which we also serve now, he said, all the Gentiles, they eagerly sought after these things. But your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. But you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. So don't worry about tomorrow. Does that feel like relax? It's okay. He knows. He's watching from on high and directing with his eye. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Well, that's a nice little tag there. I like that. In order to discover your purpose in life, start exploring where God has placed you. Does that sound childlike? Look around. Explore what, where God has placed you. And then... Look around and see what needs to be done. Have this curious desire to get involved with life, to have purpose, and then go do it. See what needs to be done and ask somebody, how can I help? How can I put the shoulder to the wheel? Where you have been placed provides and makes clear your purpose. Where you've been placed provides your purpose. It is all in there. I want to give you an illustration. The scripture is filled with stories and analogies and little teachings that liken us as vessels that were formed by the hands of a master on a potter's wheel, you, right? Lots of, or it, it brings out that we are vessels filled with the Holy Spirit. We have vessels set apart for a purpose, sanctified, that, that we have a treasure in an earthen vessel. All these illustrations, this is a picture that God uses over and over again. And your purpose is that which this vessel was designed to do, to carry, to hold, what its function is. Like vessels, all of us are multi-purpose containers. We don't have just one single thing. We can use, be used to do many different things. You just look at a woman coming home from work uh, or having uh, just woke up in the morning realizing she's got a lot of work all day long because she's a homemaker. But women really see all the needs that need to be done, especially if there is children in the house. Oh, 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 God designed their brains that way to be. Guys can be a little focused, like, okay, I got to go home, I got to cut the grass, got to cut the grass, got to cut the grass, you know, got to cut the grass. <laughs> I don't, do you know in the middle, middle of my message yesterday, I went out and cut the grass. 
I went to bed. I had two and a half hours of sleep. But, but, so it was a long night. But I could always get cut the grass in there. Got to cut the grass. Whereas women, my wife, she, she, she wakes up in the morning. She goes, her, her, at the end of the day, she always says, I said, how, how'd it go, babe? I didn't get anything done. What do you mean? I can go the task list that you did. Bottom line is you didn't get everything you wanted to get done. This, this woman's got a task list unbelievable. How many can relate in your homes that women a lot of times, they see the work that needs. That's the reason they, have, they don't have a, a wife honeydew job jar. They have a husband honeydew jar. <laughs> honeydew jar. But. So this thing is, is we are multi-purpose vessels. And some of us are doing more than one thing. We have more than one purpose in life. Our individual purpose at any given time is understood by seeing and doing what we can do, what we can do, in the place we find ourselves. That's your purpose. You have a purpose today. The placement provides insight as to its purpose. If I place this jar next to our stove, where you place yourself gives insight into what your purpose is. Where has God placed you? Each moment, each day, because it's your multi-purpose Right? You do different things at different times, but you always have a purpose because that's why God made you. Well, if I place this jar on the windowsill in the light, the placement provides insight as to its purpose. What do you think you would purpose that pot there for now? A plant. What do you know? The placement provides insight as to its purpose. Uh, oh, <laughs> if I place this jar in a dark corner next to the toilet, and you could put something in it that might be necessary, maybe a toilet brush. We aren't going to talk about that. <laughs> the word of the Lord that came to me 13 years ago. The part of it that I want to talk to you today is your placement provides your purpose. God has placed you somewhere. And he has placed you in various capacities. God has placed you in a family. What is your purpose in your family? Have you been exploring that and recognizing what God is doing? If you don't know what it is, Look at where you are and go see what needs to be done, what is priority, and what is right. And suddenly your purpose becomes very clear. He's also placed you in a community. Some of you go, I don't like people. I'm not in a community. Oh, yes, you are. You are in a society. You are in America, in case you didn't know that. You are in a area. You're in Michigan. A lot of people in Michigan, they're, you're in Hudsonville right now. There is a community out there, and we should be aware and think, oh God, in this area, Granville, Holland, Zealand, Byron Center, where you are, Jenison, what is my purpose in being where I am? Because it has a purpose. You're going to Alaska, and you have a purpose, right? We do. All right. And we're going to help you in that by praying for you and supporting you. You also need to find your purpose at your job if you are employed. The place you work, you were placed there. And yes, the, the boss has a job description and a purpose for being there, not just to make it look prettier. He wants to get work done. Therefore, he placed you there. Know what it is. But did you know there is, as a believer, there's also a purpose for you being at that job? Do you wake up in the morning and say, God, why am I at the top of a tower fixing a radio? 
There's someone who climbs those huge towers. Why am I there? To get close to God, 300 foot up in the air? No. To fix the, ra- the, 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 the radio, that's right up there. But, but also when you come down, you are interacting with people. For one thing, you are there to l- demonstrate what a Christian works like. That a Christian is being watched all the time. Your testimony is being formed by the way that you honor and make money for your employer. I, did you know it's good to make money for your employer? That's your purpose first for going to work. Serve the customer, yes, but to make money. (laughs) But you as a Christian should be the best employee and that is a testimony to God, testimony to your employer and a testimony to your fellow employees. Also, but what, why has God placed you in a local church and I hope you're placed in a local church because it is important God has things he wants you to do are you aware of the areas of influence that your placement in each of these areas of life are you aware of the influence you carry in that have you been exploring each of the places that you've been placed Have you noticed what needs to be done in each area? Well, yeah, I I go home and complain about it all day long. The boss, if he finally gets someone to empty the waste paper basket, you know, I might dust the mess, and then then, then, then I don't get enough money. Well, I come to this church, and you know what? You know what that? You know, someone should do this. Someone should do that. Someone should do that. I can see clearly. This is, if I were king, this is what we do. It's not my church. Yes, it is. About as much as it is yours. Amen. All right? So when we're in the local body, we need to understand that being placed here gives you a purpose. Have you taken the personal initiative to step forward and help in each of these areas? In each of these, God has placed you there for a purpose. We don't even understand why we're in some of the places. But if we embrace our position, our place at the moment, and serve where we are, we will be made aware of our purpose in that thing. The story of Esther shows the meteoric rise of a poor Jewish orphan girl who eventually would become the queen of Persia, the most powerful nation at that point in that area. This captive had a purpose. And actually the fact that she was in captivity, the sad story that brought her there. Do you think she might have wondered, what is my purpose, why am I here? Her story doesn't seem to have much of an obvious spiritual one, but when we look at it, there's in the story, in her story, there is a villain, Haman, who is attempting to get rid of Esther's uncle, Mordecai, along with all of that ethnic group, the Jews. The target of the prince of power of darkness, the prince of Persia, at it again, trying to have an extermination of God's chosen people who he said, don't touch them. That Jewish nation was, could have been wiped out, but for the Esther, Mordecai sees the purpose for why Esther's been put in the place Let's read that. Esther 4, 13 through 16. Then Mordecai, that's the uncle of Esther, told them to reply to Esther. Do not imagine that you in the king's palace can escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place and you and your father's house will perish. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little theology right now I'm going to tell you. 
for all those people think God needs you? He doesn't. It's silence. Some of you are processing. God needs me. He needs me. I've heard people tell me, He needs me to give. He needs me to do this. If, they don't, if you don't tell someone, they'll be lost forever. That is not true. God is all-powerful, and His purposes will be established. He wants to use you. God wants to use you. But if, as Mordecai said, if you stand quietly and allow the Jews to be killed, the blood will be on your shoulders and you'll perish. But God will raise up another to do the deliverance. All right? You can talk to me later on that if you want to. And I got lots of scripture. Can I get an amen from some? God wants to use you. And this is what he said. And who knows whether you have not attained royalty for such a time as this. Can you imagine that? Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, go assemble all the Jews who are found in Susa and fast for me and don't eat or drink for three days, nights, or day. And I and my maidens also will fast in the same way. And thus I will go into the king, which is not according to the law. In other words, she was risking her life. And if I perish, I perish. She did not perish, but saved the life of all the Jews. Hallelujah. Sometimes God's purposes are not obvious until the end. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways, my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than yours. Trust God's vantage point. Trust him. God has no obligation to share his master plan with us. That's why they call it a walk of faith. I walk by faith. I don't know. I am a pawn in God's army, a preciously loved pawn. He loves me. But I have already laid my life down when I became a Christian. I have said to my life, if I'm taken out for the sake of the gospel, I'm expendable. God loves me, and therefore, I will trust him, and he doesn't have to reveal all his end game before I will obey. It is a good plan, and we can trust that vantage point to prepare for our purposes in life. We need to faithfully serve in the place you find yourself. I'm going to say that again. You want to prepare for wonderful things in God? Start faithfully serving in the meager, seemingly below your status. Maybe go use that last picture and take that from behind out of that bowl and clean it. And volunteer in those areas. Find somewhere that you can put your shoulder to the wheel. That is how you prepare to be used by God. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge of wisdom in the grave. In other words, while you're sucking air, make sure you do what God tells you to and find something to do. Be active. Isaiah 30 verse 21 says, And your ears will hear a word behind you. This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right or the left, this brings up a concept in guidance that you need to understand if you want to find your purpose in life. Action before guidance. You have been given the, the guidance by the last scripture. God says, whatever you're doing, do it with all your might. Do it as if you're serving God. Whatever place you're on, pick up, find something to do. You know, many sit around doing nothing, waiting for God to tell them to do something. You cannot guide a stationary object. A rudder does not work on a ship that's not moving. 
You'd have to go back and forth real hard to get it to move a little bit. No, it's designed to have the wind in its sails and moving. But sometimes you may feel, God told me he had things for me to do. How many have had the Lord speak things to your heart? You go, I got a list of things God said he wants me to do. Some purposes, right? Most of you have. And you've been waiting a long time saying, God, when am I these things that you said I would do? When is it ever going to materialize? And here I am doing stuff that feels just worthless. It's, I, you, told, you showed a vision to me of awesome influence in the kingdom. And my heart is to do that. And I've been waiting for so long and I seem like it's not happening. It's almost like God forgot you. Maybe the purpose, shouldn't the purpose have been revealed by now? Is it because I'm in the wrong place? Do I have to go somewhere else and then, then God will use me? Well, I'm going to point to the story of Joseph in the Old Testament. Here was a young man who had received a vision and a calling from the Lord. He was someone who got lots of visions. He was blessed of God. And he had received a vision that one day he would stand before all of his brothers. He was the younger brother. And all of his older brothers and many people would be coming before him. And they'd be bowing down. And Don't go tell that to your family. <laughs> they would all be honoring him. That's, gonna, that's not going to go over real well if you tell that story. Sometimes God doesn't... What he whispers to you in secret, you don't have to go, go say out loud. You can just, as Mary did, he all the, held all these things in her heart, pondering them. You know? God had shown him a preview of the heights of glory and authority that one day he would wield. And God told him he was destined for greatness. But one day, while faithfully delivering serving his younger brothers in the field. His brother saw him and said, there's that dreamer, and they threw him into a pit. Well, that's certainly going in the wrong direction for greatness, right? Or was it a launching into his destiny? Then he was sold in Egypt to Potiphar. He, well, well, this is a nicer place to be, I guess. And, and, and he, he arose because of his diligence. Everything he did, he did as to the Lord. He found himself working, and all of a sudden, he was recognized for that and, and, and given a place of honor in the house. And then his wife saw that he was an attractive guy, and she made a move on him. And he flees. And she accuses her husband that he ra tried to rape her. Whoa, man, take this slave and throw him in prison. So that's what they did. They put this guy, man, God, you're making a mistake. I thought you told me I would, someday it would be, I, how is this helping? God, Joseph trusted God and explored the place he found himself, and he started to serve in the prison. He did not let his visions of grandeur keep him from being faithful in small things. Are you willing to be faithful in small things, or do you think you've got such an awesome call of God that, 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 that's beneath you? Let all the lesser people do it. I personally have seen people who are leaders in this church right now be the ones who actually seem to show up and work. I remember 13 years ago who, who set up chairs. And some of those chair setter uppers are right now strong men and women of God in this place. And some of, the, some of those people who set up chairs were elders. Service is the prerequisite for being given honor and blessing. After years of faithful service in prison, at the right time, at God's time, the larger purpose of God was revealed. And he came before Pharaoh, the captive before Pharaoh. And suddenly, in a moment, he was made second in command to Pharaoh and the ruler of Egypt. Genesis 50, 18 through 21. 
Then his brothers also came. And again, there's a famine in the land of Israel. Of course, we know the story if you've, if you've read your Bible stories, how there was a famine and, and, and many years. They didn't know where Joseph was and his father was just so distraught over it and despairing of life, had lost his purpose in life. And his brothers went to Egypt and they're standing before a man who couldn't be their brother because he was just a powerful man. And, and this is what transpired. Then his brothers, it's Joseph's brothers, also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am in God's place. As for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So the, they comforted them and spoke kindly to them. God's purposes in your life will be revealed in his timing. And I'm okay with that. Even if it's at the end, I go out underneath a martyr's sword. I'm okay. I am not in this world trying to get any accolades. I want to hear my Lord and Savior one day say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You are called to serve in whatever place you are. That is your purpose. That is your purpose. The place you find yourself in right now may not lead to the pinnacle of purpose that Joseph did. But as you look and explore the places that God has put you in, you will find purpose. And if you have not been given direction, start with whatever needs to be done. Act like God has you in this place. Act with authority. Pick up trash like you're the boss. How many of you know that bosses pick up trash? Real bosses that built the company themselves. The Bible says in Luke 16 verse 10, He who is faithful in very little things is faithful also in much. If you can pick up the trash well, you might be able to be head of personnel and get rid of, well, and make sure that you hire, hire the right people. Okay. Behave. Luke 19, verse 17. And someday, God will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Because you have been faithful in a very little thing, you are to be in authority over ten cities. That's in heaven. God is the potter and he made you for a purpose. Be pliable in his hand. Let him be God. You just be good. His plan is to make a vessel that will be practical serving this world where he has placed you. Deliver his love. Deliver his hope. Deliver peace in Jesus' name. Your desire determines your direction and destiny, and that's toward heaven. Your placement provides your purpose in whatever sphere of influence you find yourself. And as you function, that's an action, you will find fulfillment. Now, I want us to stand up because I'm speaking to a group of people with a purpose and a call. Not one. You're multi-purpose vessels. And I want to have the Holy Spirit fill you with everything that you need for life and godliness. For life means your job, helping your neighbor, and godliness, doing things that are spiritual, okay? But all of those things are intertwined, all right? 
So if you want to just put your hands up to God, who is the one who fills? Oh, Lord, here we stand. Vessels designed to hold the glory of God. A treasure in earthen vessels. Lord, we so desire for you to fill us so that we can pour out in the areas that we are going to be operating. I pray, Lord, that our impact would be powerful as if God were there pouring out from us. I pray, Lord, that the anointing of your spirit would protect us from the forces of the enemy. I pray that the anointing of God will give us clear directions saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. I pray, Lord, that the, uh, this empowerment from heaven would be stronger than all of the threats that come to our mind and that we would, in confidence, with action, step out in faith and win this world for you, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said... Amen. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you and relax. Enjoy yourself and have peace. I hope you've enjoyed this. To hear other messages by Calvin Berksma, go to facebook.com forward slash GCF church or youtube.com forward slash GCF messages. You may also follow Georgetown Christian Fellowship with our app. Go to either iOS or the Play Store for Android and search for Word Server. That's one word, Word Server. And install the free application. There you will get all of our messages, including streaming capabilities.